able to conquer. But this fortified city is the place that Joshua is now looking at. And God is telling Joshua, I want you to see. I want you to see that I've already given unto thy hand Jericho. I've given the king unto you and all the mighty men of valor. But notice the simple words that God spoke unto Joshua. He just simply said, I want you to see. I want you to see from your eyes of faith. I want you to see from a supernatural standpoint that I've already given unto your hand the city of Jericho. In other words, the battle is not going to be yours, but it's already mine. Praise God. I'm going to give you the victory. I'm going to allow you to be winners. I'm going to bring you through this. And Joshua, I just want you to see that I'm still God. I just want you to see. I'm going to give you the power. I'm going to give you the victory that you need to conquer this city. Hallelujah. I want you to know tonight God wants you and I just to see that he's going to give us the power. He's going to give you the victory. Whatever you need to conquer your storm, God wants you to see for yourself that he's still God and he's going to give you the victory that you need tonight. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. But we, we supernatural eyesight comes from the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. From the indwelling of the Holy Ghost working on the inside of our lives. It's not something that you can manufacture. It's not something that you can just build yourself. It comes to an intimate relationship with the Lord. God wants us to see. Uh -huh. I said God wants us as his people, as his church tonight. God wants us to see. To see it for ourselves. To see ourselves as not defeated but an overcomer. To see ourselves as not a loser but a winner tonight. Praise God. I'm not a loser tonight but I'm a winner. Praise God. By the power and the authority of God tonight. As a child of God. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. I'm not a loser but I'm a winner tonight. I'm not defeated but I am a an overcomer by the power of God tonight. Amen. Praise God. Kind of see it. We, we walk by faith and not by sight. But there comes times you got to see it with the supernatural eye. Uh, it may not be in front of it, but you speak those things that are not as though they are to declare. I may not see it today, but bless God, it's on the way. Hallelujah. I may not see it in my life right now, but bless God, it's a coming my way because I see God as my healer. I see God as my deliverer. I see God as my provider. I see God as my way. I and when I, that's my way when I need a way. I see God as a lily of my valley and the bright and morning star. I see God as my all and all tonight. Amen. Praise God. I see him that way. I see God as my light in the darkness. I see God as my promise keeper. Uh -huh. I see God as my miracle worker. I see God as my Jehovah Jireh. Amen. How do you see God tonight? How do you see God tonight? I see God as my everything. I see God as my all in all. I see God as my refuge. He's my fortress. He's my strong tower. He's my all in all. That's the way I see him tonight. Amen. Praise God. But a lot of folks in the church today has lost their spiritual eyesight. They no, they no longer have the faith to see that God 
can still do it again. The Lord told Joshua, he said, I want you to see. The walls at this point is still standing. I said they're still standing. But the Lord said, I want you to see that I've given unto thy hand Jericho. Uh -huh. Other words, you may still be fighting the battle. Uh -huh. You may be fighting the same battle today as you was last week. But oh, you've got, you've got supernatural eyesight that says, I see God making a way in this storm. I see God making, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I see God making a way in the midst of my trial. I see God making a way in my valley. I see God delivering my home and turning this thing around. I see God working it out for my good. I can see it tonight. Amen. Praise God. I can see it. Oh, God. Can you see it tonight? Do you see God as your way maker? Do you still see God as your light in darkness? As your promise keeper? As a God of breakthrough? Lord said, Joshua, I want you to see. I have given into thy hand Jericho. But for me to see, Brother Paul, I got to stay the course. I can't quit. I can't give up. I can't throw in the towel. I got to stay the course. Will I see it today? Will I see it tomorrow come to reality and come to fruition? I got to hang on to the eyes of faith that says it's on the way. I got to keep looking with eyes of faith that says God is on the move in my life. God has spoke to me and it's going to come to pass. And I got to keep looking with the eyes of faith. Amen. Praise God. I got to keep looking. Got to see it. God has given us a supernatural ability to hear and to know his voice. He said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Yeah. See, supernatural eyesight is the ability to see and understand the things. That's beyond the natural realm. Uh -huh. It enables us to see the invisible realm of the Spirit of God. To see the unlimited power of God. You cannot walk where you cannot see. Uh -huh. oh, I want to tell that again. You cannot walk where you cannot see. Yeah. God wants us to look with eyes of faith beyond our natural condition. I come in here on Sunday mornings and, and I look over this crowd. And I come in on Sunday night and look over this crowd. Or, or Wednesday night, whichever service. But every time I come, I see the seats full. Because I look with eyes of faith and says, God's going to fill these seats. God's going to do it again. God's going to do it again. Praise God. He's going to save spouse. He's going to save kids. He's going to save the neighbor. My God, he's going to do it again. Amen. Praise God. I don't know what we've got here tonight. 50 or 60 people. I don't know. But I see beyond that. You see it. You cannot walk where you cannot see. Got to see it with the eyes of faith. I says it's on the way. I said eyes of faith that looks beyond the natural realm. Praise God. 
see. The Lord said to Joshua, I want you to see. I want you to look beyond what you see right now. I want you to see, though, in your heart. I want you to know I've already given unto your, under your hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. I've already given you the ability and the victory that you need to conquer this city. All I need you to do, Joshua, is just see it for yourself. Amen. Do we see it today? Do we see it today? If God healed cancer 20, 30 years ago. God can do it again. If God healed sickness 20, 30 years ago. God can do it again. God healed leukemia 20, 30 years ago. God can do it again. Oh, he's looking for somebody with eyes of faith that says God can still do it. God can still do it. He's still a deliverer. He's still a healer. Hallelujah. I said he's still a healer. Praise God. I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight. I'm preaching to somebody tonight. My God, he's still a healer. Just need to see it with your eyes. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Somebody praise the Lord in this house. Oh, God. Got to see it. The trouble in the church today is we don't see it no more. We come in. We come in with the, with the mentality at times. Well, it's just going to be another service. But Joe's going to get up. He's going to moderate. We're going to have a few songs. We're going to take up offering. Pastor's going to preach. This is going to be another service. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Just going to be another service. That's the mentality we come with sometimes. Well, it's, it's church time. It's just going to be another service. But I, I come here tonight looking for miracles tonight. Oh, glory to God. I come here looking for somebody to get saved tonight. Praise God. Somebody said, well, preacher, it's, it's Wednesday night. I know what night of the week it is. But I still come tonight. Praise God. Looking for miracles. I come looking for somebody to get saved in this house. I come looking for somebody to get baptized in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I come with eyes of faith that says God can do it again. If he can do it on Sunday morning, he can do it on Wednesday night. If he can do it on Sunday night. My God can do it on Wednesday night. Amen. Praise God. your hand, Jericho, the king thereof, and all the mighty men of valor. Got to see it. God's going to bring me out. God's going to fill a church. Praise God. God's going God's to build our youth department. Praise God. Said vacation Bible school they had to run two buses, two van loads. I told him, I said, I hope to God I got to buy you a school bus. Praise God. I hope to God you got to get your CDLs. You got to buy your school bus. Some of you are looking at me like, oh, preacher, watch out. Praise God. I hope we had to buy five of them. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's just to reach some young boy and some young girl's life to lead them to Jesus. I got, hallelujah. Later on, they become Pentecostal preachers. Maybe they become the pastor of this church. Who knows what God has got in store? Hallelujah. He's just looking for somebody to see his glory. Amen. Hey, come. Woo! Come on, Praise come. Got to see it. I told them that last Wednesday night. They looked at me with eyes as big as quarter. They said, well, you ain't got a CDL. I said, we can give him a CDL. Praise God, a seat. Seat. Ah, God, seat. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. See him. Praise God. I believe God can do it. Hallelujah. I said I believe God can do it. Hallelujah. Whatever you're going through tonight, just believe God can fix it. Just believe God can turn it around. Just believe God can bring you through it. Amen. If he brought you to it. He'll bring you through it. Praise God. He brought them to the city of Jericho. He didn't bring them to the city of Jericho just to leave them there. But he brought them to the city of Jericho to bring them to it. To give them the power, Brother Roger, to conquer it. Hallelujah. Joshua obeyed. He obeyed God. Uh -huh. He tells the people the very plan of God. He said, take up the Ark of the Covenant. Let the seven priests bear seven trumpets or ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. He tells the people, pass on and can pass this city. Let him this arm pass on before the ark of the Lord. Gives them the plan of God. The priests and the soldiers, they obey God. You see, victory comes through obedience. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. You better help me. I'll preach here two hours tonight. I said victory comes through obedience. The priests, the soldiers, they all obey God. You can see victory, but you can never cease it without obedience. You can never capture it without obedience. That's the reason the scripture said, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. That's the reason Revelation chapter 22 verse 14 says, Blessed are they that do his commandments. Praise God. Hallelujah. If I want the blessings of God, if I want to walk in new territory, if I want to walk in high places, I've got to be obedient unto God. I've got to be obedient unto the purpose and the plan that God has for my life. Amen. Somebody praise him in this house. Glory. I went to Kaywood, Church of God. Christy and I did the pastor of First Church. East Bernstadt was open at the time that I went to Kaywood. And I had some people of the church in East Bernstadt, they called me. They said, Brother Eric, our church is open. Why don't you and Sister Christy run your name? Won't you call the state overseer and have him run your name and come to our church? We hadn't even moved to Kaywood, just received the appointment to go there. Just received it. Just received the vote to go. They called me like two days later. Brother Eric, why don't you come? I said, I can't come. I said, Kaywood Church of God is where we're supposed to go. I said, that's where I've got to go. They said, well, you know, it's, we're a lot closer home to you. Where, where you're from. I said, I know that, but I've got to go to Kaywood Church of God. I said, that's where God wants us. God has spoken it, and that's where we've got to go. I know that it's in the mountains. I know it's on the Kentucky state line, but that's where God has spoken. That's where we're supposed to go, and that's where I'm going. They said, well, okay, if that's what you're going to do. I said, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be the pastor of the Kaywood Church of God. I had to obey God. Praise God. It may not be the way you always want it. It may not be the places and, and the things that you have an eye idea of, but you got to be obedient unto God if you're going to walk in the victory of the Lord, if you're going to walk in the high places that God's ordained for your life, you've got to be servants that's obedient to God. you got to stay the course through obedience unto a holy God. Amen. Somebody praise him in this house. Amen. Got to stay the course. Went to Kaywood, and, and I shared some of it with you before. It's not having ideal situations. They're getting ready to cut their electricity off and all these other things. But God said, this is where I want you. This is where I want you. 
And for about three years or two and a half, three years, we had revival. In the course of two and a half, three years, people were getting saved, people coming off the street, getting saved. I mean, we had camp meeting every time we come together, every service. Somebody getting saved, somebody getting delivered, God moving in miracles, signs, and wonders. I mean, we literally had revival for two and a half to three years. But God said, this is where I want you. This is where you're supposed to go. You got to you gotta stay the course. I said, you got to stay the course. Too many people today is getting off. Of course, because they're getting their eyes on other things and other ideas. But you got to stay the course. The roadmap is the word of God, and you got to stay the course. And the way to do that is to be obedient unto God's word and to the voice of God. Amen. Praise God. Somebody give him praise. Amen. Two and a half, three years later. Then we ended up going to each first step. Because I felt released and felt it was time to go then. But you got to be careful. You got to be careful of the moves you make. You even buying a car, you buying a house, you better be careful. You better make sure God's in it. You better stay the course. By that I mean staying the course in your prayer life. Staying in touch with God, staying close to God. There's a devil on the loose. It's roaring like a lion seeking whom he may devour. You got to stay the course through obedience to the word of God. I'm going to stay, live, die, sink, or swim. I'm going on for Jesus just the same. Oh, glory to God. I said, live, die, sink, or swim. I'm going on for Jesus just to say. I tell you, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Live, die, sink, or swim. I'm going on for Jesus just to say. I'm going to stay the course. I stayed the course. I'm hurry. I stayed the course because of endurance. Those that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. You got to stay the course. It's not going to always be easy. It's going to be times it's going to be tough. Times it's going to be hard. But you got to stay the course. God told Moses, stand still. He said, you tell my people to stand still and see salvation of the Lord. Yes, right. Moses told him, he said, you'll see it today for the Egyptians. Whom you've seen today, you'll see them again no more forever. But you got to stand still and see Sometimes you just, Brother Paul, man, just got to stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes we just, we got to stand still. And by that, I mean you got to stay the course. We're going to see the plan of God. We're going to see the glory of God. You got to stay the course. They stayed the course. You know the story. They marched around six days. And Brother Roger, on that seventh day, they marched around it seven times. The trumpets blew. They shouted out the great shout. Then what took place? Somebody tell me what happened then. Walls came falling down. Praise God. All because of obedience. I said all because of obedience. Oh, I'm going to tell that again. All because of obedience. Hallelujah. That's what happens when we obey God. I said that's what happens when we stay the course. That's what happens when we stay the course. God, I bring victory. God, I bring deliverance. God, I bring breakthrough. Every single time that you stay the course and you stick to God's plan. Amen. Somebody give him praise in this house. Hallelujah. Times that you'll never see it if you don't endure. You gotta hold fast. You gotta hold fast to God's plan. You gotta hold fast to His word. God spoke to you. You gotta hold fast to that. Brother Rogers, times that I didn't have anything else, but I had the word of the Lord. And by the word of the Lord, I had a specific word that God spoke to me into my spirit. A promise that he had given to me that says, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. There's times I didn't have anything else for the land. But I had the promise and the word of God in my spirit. And kept me going. Stay the course. I 
I'm here tonight because I believe with all of my heart this is where God wants me in Christian. I believe that. That's the reason I allowed the overseer to run my name because I believe this is where God wants us. These first step treated us like king and queen. There's nothing good but good to it, just like you folks are. God spoke to me through a dream. Spoke to me through a dream. He'll speak to you. See, he'll speak to you. May not always be what you want to hear, but he'll speak to you. Yeah, stay the course. I was washing dishes. September 13th. When the overseer called. See, this is how God moves. I, I didn't have my name to stay in the office asking to move. Never spoke to the overseer about moving. Washing dishes. Christy, going to Walmart. Washing dishes. Imagine that. <laughs> Answered the phone. He said, this is Administrator Bishop, Charles Bishop. He said, I'm calling to stir your nest. I just kind of cackled. said, what have you got now? He told me what, what he had. I felt immediately in my spirit. This is God. This is God. Christy gets home. I'm standing outside with the word of the Great in my hand. What's wrong with you? I said, get the boxes. What are you talking about? She said, get boxes. I said, the overseer called. I said, we're going. We're moving. What she said, they ain't even seen us. I said, God's in. Stay the course. Listen, man, I'm, I'm not up here. Please, I'm not up here to toot my horn. I'm not up here for that, no reason at all. I'm just telling you, you got to stay the course. God speaks. You got to obey God. I didn't know I was going to have to have open heart surgery and all these other things. You got to stay the course. I told you before, we looked at houses on top of houses, but there wasn't a one until we bought the one that we moved into. That was the one. you got to stay the course. You may think it's other places. You may think it's other things. But God says, no, I've got one in mind. God says, I've got something special for you. This is the place where I want you. This is what I want for your life. you got to stay the course. Come to be here, Sister Jenny. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Why don't you stand with them all over the house? You don't stand, I'm going to keep on preaching. <laughs> but Jackie, you better stand up back up, brother. <laughs> Praise God. He was the first to up just about it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. I love this church. Always have. May the Lord take me, if he take me by the grave tomorrow or next week. Whenever my time comes, I always will. But you got to see it. See it. 